Um, this is uh, Mary Slesser over here. Mary, would you stand up? Oh, it's my wife, Cindy. <laughs> Anybody knows a man in the ministry is there only because he's got a wife that God has amen. given. Yes, amen. So I give a lot of the credit for what we've done through the years in South Africa and Zimbabwe to a wife that's willing to stay right there by her husband. Amen. I appreciate that. Amen. And uh, we've been, uh, we went into South Africa in 95, just to give you guys a little, a little bit of an idea. Saved in 82 in Carbondale, Colorado. That's where God had us, brought us to where we could hear the word of God and make a decision. In 1985, what happened in South Africa was they let the coloreds vote. That place went ballistic. God brought, because of what was happening politically in South Africa, God brought to our attention the possibility of doing something for him and actually getting saved in a, in a small missions-minded church. And I'd never really seen a missionary before, but they would always stir and challenge us. So in 1985, having gotten saved for three years, really we wanted to do something for the Lord. We just didn't know what it was. So when South Africa became the center of news, it's, it was one of those things I said, Lord, wherever you want me to go, if you want me to go there, I'll go. Arranged that to my pastor. My pastor said, let's pray about that for a couple of years. In 87, I left Carbondale, moved to Oklahoma City. And then in 1995, 10 years after what happened down in South Africa, God prepared a man to be able to go in and do something for him. And we're thankful for that. We went in with six children, my wife pregnant with number seven. Uh, number seven had passed. We got a little girl buried in South Africa, Priscilla Joy. Then we had two more in South and adopted a young man, uh, an African man, and um, at three months old, Jabulo. And uh, we're thankful for all the children God has given us and thankful for the ministry that he allowed us to set up in South Africa. There was a man that got saved in South Africa. His name was Shadrach Kumbiani. And Kumbiani got saved in 97. In 2002, after going through our institute there, he said, Pastor, he said, I believe God wants me to go back up in Zimbabwe. I'd never been into Zimbabwe, had no desire to go to Zimbabwe, but to help him go up and start a work in Zimbabwe was what God had on our plan. So in 2002, we went up there twice a year. I'd take one of my children, help him on the side of a mountain located in the Eastern Highlands. It was right off of Tea Estate, right on the Mozambican border. We were able to start Rescue Baptist Church there, and God had blessed in a great way. In 2009, when our work in South Africa became indigenous and, and local leadership, national leadership. God directed us to go up into Zimbabwe, a country that I've been familiar with traveling in and out, but had never really considered going there. It is probably more of what, in most people's mind, Africa was like. South Africa was a lot like America. Um, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of struggles in South, honestly, and a dangerous place. But going up into Zimbabwe, God led us up there in 09, and we were able, if you go back on our table tonight, as you get out, um, we've got boots on the ground back there. And that is a tremendous blessing. You know, it took 12 years for us to get a core group of men, about 10 men right now, that have been doctrinally trained, have a philosophy of what God would have the believers to do by way of our response to the Great Commission. And really, that's, that's kind of what I want to touch on tonight, because... A book written by a ex-Delta Force commander. The book's entitled, The Mission, The Men, and Me. And it's a tremendous book, a lot of principles in there. But really, I, I, got, to, I got to think, of, the mission that God gave the local church has never changed. Right. Right. Never changed. That's it's right. still going right. to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The men are different in every country. And the men I look at as being nationals because going into a foreign country, you're going to probably be led somewhere else in the country as a missionary would, but possibly training men to be able to catch the vision of what God wants them to do. And should God raise them up and call them, they're, they're trained, they're equipped, they've got the necessary tools to be able to perform God's will. And so we're Tremendously excited about that. We've got three families. And Cindy and I, listen, there, are, there were no independent Baptist missionaries in Zimbabwe when I went up there. And to this day, there are none in there. Some guys might have a cross-border ministry from Zambia, Botswana, or South Africa. But really, nobody that would be in there. But we had prayed, and we had prayed, and we had prayed. And God answered our prayer, gave us three prospects 
We came to head out of Ron Ralph's church in Carthage, Tennessee, is taking his wife and his children and going to be in Zimbabwe, Lord willing, in March. We have plans to go back there in February, like to help them to get acclimated to the country, help them get adjusted. He's going to be working two hours north from where we are. I'm sending him a couple of our guys. It's greater, greater to start a work when you have somebody that you can work with and groom them for the ministry. And that's basically what Brother Lee has right now is two men that are, that are our best guys. And I believe, I believe God can, can work through people who are surrendered. Amen. Amen. Uh, another man out of Brother Ralph's church is uh, Cody Rich and his wife, Cammie, and they've got four children. They're going to be going in also in March, staying in there for six months and then coming back. And then we've got a man out of our church, Stuart Hoffmeister, who will also be going in there a year from, the, well, a year from December, and he'll be coming into Zimbabwe also to be able to see what God would have us to do at that time. But we're, we're grateful for just the prospects of being in God's will. And, and tonight, if you have a Bible, turn in your Bible to the book of Judges. I was reading in the book of Judges, and I noticed something in chapter 3 about the judges that God raised up. And he raised those men up in a very apostate time. And really, right now, we're living in days of apostasy, are we not? I'm glad that, that you, 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 can't, you can't change the truth, but there are men who want to try it. Amen? You can't change the, the mission because it stays the same. God's, God has a, has a heart of compassion toward those that are lost, and he wants them saved. But look in Judges chapter 3. The first judge that's mentioned in, 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 in the book is a man by the name of Othniel. And I want you to see something. It says, The Spirit of the Lord, in verse 10, chapter 3, verse 10 of Judges, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he judged Israel and went out to war. That's the first time that the Bible mentions the Spirit of the Lord came on anybody. And it's important for us to notice because really, if, if we didn't have the Spirit of God and the Word of God of which the Holy Spirit inspired there would be no way for men to come yeah. to understand truth. And it's through the word of God that people become introduced to what God says about our condition. Right. And so this judge, it's interesting, I see the spirit of the Lord had came upon him. The second judge is found in verse 15. His name is Ehud. And we know something about Ehud. Ehud was a man that had a dagger, remember? He was a left-handed man. It's, it's interesting. The Bible is very specific on a lot of things. A left hand. How many are left-handed here? Okay. God raised a left-handed man up, put a dagger in his leg, pulled out that dagger. Look what it says about the dagger. In verse 16. But Ehud made him a dagger which had what? Now what is the, what is the only other thing in the word of God that we understand has two edges? The word of God. The word of God that was given to us through the inspiration of the Spirit of God. So we have Othniel as a man being filled. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Now we got Ehud, a man that's made himself a dagger, and he also was a judge. Othniel gave him 40 years of rest. Ehud gave them 80 years of rest. But there's a third judge mentioned in chapter 3, and it's the very last verse. And I want to kind of key on this for a little bit. It says that after him was Shamgar, the son of of Anath, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with that what? I was going to ask how many of you guys know what this is. I think you got an idea of what it is right now, amen. Do you know this also is in reference to the Spirit of God? Do you know those men were killed by an ox goat? But you know what? It wasn't the ox goat that did it. It wasn't Shamgar that did it. Amen. Otherwise, we'll take the pride and take, take, take the glory away from God and say, look what I've done. 600 men. I could just imagine. Maybe, maybe, maybe Pastor Stacy can demonstrate how this thing was done in what such way where 600 men were killed. <laughs> Amen? But now, this is an important instrument. Anybody know what this thing does? Now, missions is all about plowing, sowing, and we're fixing to go into this time of harvest, right? It all has to do with with this implement right here. 
Because before you can sow the seed, you've got to break the soil. Right. And what they did, this end of it was used to be able to take and scrape off the, the clods of dirt that would gather on that plow. But this end right here, it's important for us to understand that. Brother Steve, would you come up here and help me with this? We're going to demonstrate with Brother Steve and I just exactly how to work this axle. Now, you, all right? now, the plowman, this is a plowman's instrument. So he's plowing with, with, with a team of oxen. Amen? Hey, Brother Steve, down there a little bit more. Right about there. Now, keep facing that way. Now, listen, ox, ox were generally trained when they were young. The, the, the yoke was, and they became accustomed to that. They were trained verbally. In other words, you can direct your ox team by verbal commands. But now, if, if they didn't respond to the verbal command, the ox goal was, was a two, it had, it had two purposes, amen? And so, now he loves his animals. The, the plowman loves his animals, so he's not going to hurt the animal. But you know what this was used to do? This was put right down right down on the back of that leg, right on the haunch right there. Now he didn't, he didn't abuse his animal. All he did, all he did was touch it. Mm. Brother Steve, thank you so much. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but what we find here, if he would not respond to the verbal command, then this was put at the back of his haunch. And what that ox, and for whatever reason, he stopped plowing. This was just a reminder, we need to keep moving. We need to keep going. There's a lot of things that, that, that God's people sometimes get hung up on or get sidetracked with. But we find also that this is in reference to the Spirit of God because I remember that Jesus Christ himself, the resurrected Savior, when speaking to the Apostle Paul before with Saul, and he told Saul, he said, Saul, so, why persecutest thou me? He said, it is hard for thee to what? Kick against the... So if that ox, not responding to the verbal command, and having touched with something very sensitive, that's the most sensitive part of the ox, and he, and, and he didn't respond to that, but he kicked back. Do you know what he would do? He would hurt himself. And now listen to me. The Spirit of God does not dwell in a tabernacle that God gave the instruction for Moses as they were going through the wilderness. He doesn't dwell within the temple that David prepared and Solomon built for the Shekinah glory to encompass and stay there. But he has chosen to indwell in us. You see, Paul knew the scripture. And he was kicking against from what he saw Stephen and how, how God was working in his life. Listen, every one of us got saved at, cer at a certain time, at a certain place, under certain circumstances. But you know what I find? Always God allows us to see his word, to hear his word, and that by hearing the word of God, once we submit to that, once we're willing to comply, then God can begin to work in our life. Amen. Amen. And it's through the word of God and the spirit of God that brings the conviction upon sinners so that they can recognize their need for the Savior. And it's through the word of God. In Zimbabwe, the two books that we recommend people to get involved in right away is the book of John and the book of Romans. John helps us to understand who Jesus Christ is. And if Jesus Christ be God and died for me, then no sacrifice that I could make would be too great for him. C.T. Studd said. The highest degree of humility that has ever been exhibited on this planet was when God became flesh. And he did that. And John brings that out so clearly. How that we have a light, but if men reject the light and love their darkness and hate the light, there's nothing that God can do with them. But they need to hear. That's why Jesus, when speaking to Nicodemus, the last three things he said unto him, he said, this is the condemnation that Light is coming to the world, but men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. He said, everyone that doeth evil, hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Right. But then he says, he that doeth truth cometh to the light. Amen. Amen. And 
that's why the, the book of John is able to help people understand their condition before a holy and a righteous God. Amen. Romans helps us to see what we are in God's eyes. Not in the eyes of your family, not in the eyes of your peers, not in the eyes of your family or friend, but in the eyes of our God. And what we are in the eyes of God, we're wicked as hell and deserving to go. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And as you look in the mirror and don't like what you see, as you read the truths of God's word and God begin to show you what you are, and you don't like that, you say, the mirror is lying to me, I'm better looking than that woman. It's just a reflection of what we are. And that's what the Spirit of God does. Amen. And that's why God wants to use us right now in 222. Amen. Amen? He wants us right now to be filled with his spirit. Amen. To be able to have the filling of the spirit gives us boldness. To be able to confront people, to deal with people. People where you work, people where you load up your car with, with gas, people where, where you meet in the store, anywhere. Listen, God is working with people. How many are saved and know Christ as their Savior? Do you have something on your plate? We all have something on our plate, don't we? But can you imagine if you didn't have Christ? If you didn't have his guidance or his spirit, the comforter in, in, in a myriad of, of situations. Amen? God can pick you up no matter where you are, help you see what you truly are in God's eyes, and make you cry out to the one who is wanting to save you. And that's what, that's what the word of God does. And short of the word of God, we're not going to get anything. Short of the Spirit of God and His filling in our life, we're not going to get anything done. God's people, if you are reading the Word of God, God will speak to you. He knows where you're reading, doesn't He? He knows what you're going through. And as you read the Word of God and pray and ask God to reveal some things to you, can He show that to you? You know, it's the same thing in Zimbabwe. 90% unemployment. We have a junior doctor friend where we live, performs on an average of 20 cesareans a week as a civil servant for the government. The government pays him $200 a month. We're talking about dire poverty. We're talking about an economy that bottomed out in 08 with hyperinflation and has never really recovered from that. We're talking about corruption, but, but probably not as great a corruption as we have in Washington. Amen. Right. The corruption that is within the heart of man, God's word can reveal that to them. Amen. And should they kick against the pricks, it's you and I that need to be there to help them to understand their need for the Savior. Amen. Amen. And it's through missions that that job is done. The mission doesn't change. The men are boots on the ground. But what about me? And that's where you need to apply it personally tonight. Amen. For the love of Christ constraineth yes, sir. us. Well, if you make it personal, the love of Christ should constrain you. Mm -hmm. huh? That if one died for all, then we're all what? Dead. See, there is no life without Christ. Right. There is no life without Christ. And that he died for all, that they which live, verse 15, 2 Corinthians 5, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. God wants us to invest time and talent, even a life. How many believe it's probably the 11.30 hour in the, in the return of Christ? And it might be because of debt. It might be some other reason. But for someone to consider, maybe, Lord, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to do? Wouldn't there be someone that would respond to that in 2022 and say, God, I can see things the way they're coming. Come on, amen. I realize your return is close. If you want me here in Baltimore, I'll stay in Baltimore. I'll be a witness, a light. I'll be, I'll, I'll be one that is able to help others to come to understand their need. But Lord, if you want me to go somewhere else, I'd be willing to pray, to consider, to be able to counsel with my pastor. Amen. How old was Moses when he left? When God said to Moses, Moses, Moses. Amen. How old was Jacob when God said, Jacob, Jacob. Huh? Go back to Egypt. It's fine. Don't worry. I'll be there with you. How old was Abraham when God said, Abraham, Abraham. 
So you're about to take that knife and come down upon his son. And, and God was doing specific things, amen? When he took that young boy named Samuel and said, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel cried back in response, speak. Wouldn't that be great if someone would say, Lord, you speak to me through your word and I will do what you show me to do. Yes. There's some area in my life where I'm grieving that spirit that dwells within me so that I can be that light and that instrument and be used to be able to give others the gospel. But in the New Testament, I find that he also says, Mark and Mark. Amen. It has to do with service. Mary, Mary sat at the feet. Listen, there's nothing that's going to get done or accomplished in your family. The things on your plate, God has a way of being able to sustain some of those things if we'll but answer the Spirit's bidding. Amen? Amen? As Mary did. And then we find Simon, Simon. Simon, Simon. Satan had a desire to what? I pray for you. Aren't you glad you've got a Savior who intercedes for you? Not only lives inside, but also intercedes on the behalf of Amen. God's will. But then, the, then the, the last one, the name, Saul, Saul. Did God not do something by getting that man's attention, but he got his attention by the word of God, because he saw Stephen die. Amen? Would God use us, that our light would shine so bright, that people would come and tremble and say, I, I used to know what that guy used to do. I used to know what she was like. But there's a change, such a drastic change. Amen. Maybe I better consider some of that because this world is fast changing. Amen. 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 Oh, that God would use you in 2022 in a greater way for whatever purpose God has for you. Amen. Amen. Let's pray tonight. Amen. Father, we're grateful, and I've asked you, Lord, to use in whatever way that you choose, Lord, something that I would say would be able to help somebody to see. That, Lord, they were dead if it weren't for what you did. And, Lord, that we which are alive and have thy spirit, the life that will never be taken away, revoked, never perish, Lord, that we would, Lord, not, not live unto ourselves, but live unto you. Because of what you did, Lord, it's possible for us to be alive. Father, I pray that you've blessed this word right here, that you've allowed it to be established. Lord, though the trials have come, they've been strengthened and are going stronger than they ever had. And I ask, Lord, you 